Um, I was very struck that David Willis just said that to his way of looking at it, the pressing need is understanding and changing human behavior, which very neatly helps me to segue into our next speaker, um, Johan Rockström, who's going to talk to us about what the new science looks like. Johan um, needs no introduction, really. Um, he runs the Stockholm Resilience Center, and he's one of the co-chairs for this big new project that's about to get started, Future Earth. And the first thing I'm going to say to you, Johan, is it's a great name, Future Earth. Thank you. <laughs> Avoiding another acronym, not least. Um, Ellen Ostrom started off by making clear that we can make a difference. I interpret that as being the scientific community can make a difference. That now it's time to show that we can make a difference. And one way to do that is clearly to act on our own scientific findings. And there's a growing recognition and a growing momentum that the scientific community is, is ready to do that. Throughout this week, we've seen a tremendous evidence base coming forward showing that, as Sybil summarized as well, that we, when we take a socio-ecological approach, we've entered what we could call a 369 global reality. We're heading very decisively towards potentially a three-degree warming world. We're in the sixth mass extinction of species, and we have a moral responsibility for world population of nine billion people. What kind of science do we need to navigate as planetary stewards this transition in order to avoid threatening the very foundation of the modern economy, which is the Holocene state? A new contract between science and society is one proposition and an initiative to do this together between partners from science and society is Future Earth. Now, apart from the fantastic statement coming out of this conference, it does, of course, build on a momentum from science over a long time. The Amsterdam Declaration 2001, when, when the world gathered in a similar scientific conference like this, building then on a series of summaries and synthesis from science, and the latest one that Bob Watson showed just this week, the, planet, the Blue Planet Report, indicating that we can, unfortunately, draw some very dramatic conclusions. Humanity has reached a planetary saturation point. We now need to have an equity-based sharing of ecological space. As Bob Watson points out, humanity is able to do, has vastly outstripped our ability to understand that insights and mind shifts are now needed to propel ourselves in the right direction. That resilience in the biosphere and management of biodiversity and ecosystem services is equally important as climate mitigation. The fierce urgency of now that we have a decade when we now need to rapidly transition but that a great transformation is not only necessary, but also, as evidence points out, possible and desirable. This is, in fact, a grand, grand challenge for science at this very critical juncture. To respond to this, in 2009, under the International Council for Science, together with the International Social Science Council, a visioning process started, which I'm sure many of you were involved in, which tried to take stock of 30 years of successful advancements in Earth system science, again, the knowledge that we are the first generation that can change the operation of the entire Earth system comes out of an enormous scientific success from the global environmental change community. The visioning process showed that this success is clearly something to be recognized, but now we need to shift over into, just as David Willis pointed out, a more integrated scientific approach, build the bridge between science and society with service provisioning, have actionable research, co-designed between science and part of society, and particularly recognizing that there's a strategic program convergence today. We're seeing both in climate science, all the way to governance research and biodiversity science, that there's an integration of the recognition that things are interconnected and that we need to now work together in a more profound way. The conclusions for society are equally dramatic. Suddenly we can actually say with scientific confidence that global sustainability is a prerequisite for poverty alleviation. That in fact, we now need to predict risks of potentially catastrophic thresholds in the Earth system directly hitting the modern economy, and that innovation pathways, which we still do not know how they operate, are required for a grand transformation of our industrial metabolism, and that stewardship across scales is now a necessity for human prosperity. And this was the end of a three-year visioning process, including scientists across the world, which resulted in a conclusion that we now should start exploring a new way of doing science, launching a new major endeavor in order to respond to these challenges. Now, the world outside is asking for this, as Secretary General Ban Ki-moon pointed out. In his report, 
Resilient People, Resilient Planet in the run-up to Rio Plus 20, if you have seen it, it has a very science-based statement that the human development paradigm of today does not work. And in fact also calls for a major scientific initiative. That scientific community now needs to step up in a new contract between science and society. And that is Future Earth. Future Earth is an endeavor to respond both to our own scientific findings and to the growing demand in the world for science to step up and serve society in this transition. Now, Future Earth has as a strategic working objective to provide the knowledge required for societies in the world to face risks posed by global environmental change and also seize opportunities in a great transition to global sustainability. And we have throughout this week had several dialogues on the details around this initiative. And what I will do now in the remaining part of this presentation is just to rapidly throw, flow through a couple of the broader parts of this framework. I won't go into the details which we have been working on during the week, but I want to emphasize on behalf of the entire transition team and the alliance that leads this, that this is really work in progress. And all your inputs are, are direly needed and very, very welcome at this stage. So take what I'm saying now as tentative work in progress. Now, one starting point here is, apart from what has been clearly summarized in this conference, that we need nothing less than an Apollo-type global endeavor in order to really respond and serve societies with the knowledge and solutions that we need, is also a self-critical recognition that, by and large, our global environmental change research so far has been looking at the human impacts on the Earth system, the acceleration patterns, and how the Earth system functions. Now we have the opportunity to integrate this much further into also looking into how we respond and what are the impacts on peoples. And this is the integration we're trying to achieve with Future Earth. It can be summarized in this following way, which, which I think is one exciting framing of, of what we now need in terms of new integrated knowledge. We clearly need to understand the complexity of the Earth system. We need to continue supporting the disciplinary science from biodiversity, climate sensitivities, ocean dynamics, etc., all the way to the deeper social science issues of behavioral change and new economics of global environmental change. But we need to link that immediately to world development, the fact that global change in a globalized world is now directly affecting food, economics, energy, water, livelihoods across scales and that global sustainability is a prerequisite for world development, which has all to do with global environmental change, and that this, which is not shown in this picture, also acts across scales. This is a tremendous challenge, but also something that science increasingly is addressing. The core principles of Future Earth are outlined here. What we want, which is also something that's been called upon this morning, is, is a global platform for collaboration on Earth system research for global sustainability. Focusing on the most complicated questions, in the world which require international collaboration. So the international integrated science for global sustainability. Building partnerships, the contract between science, policy and practice, and clearly doing this in a co-design and co-production mode, which I'll come back to. And we'd like to have this as a platform which brings on board, ready from the start in defining questions, different stakeholders in society, and also have a leadership in this program which, which integrates across different stakeholders in society. And clearly also have a major step change in how science engages with change processes in the world. The entire endeavor of, of announcing Future Earth today comes out of, as I start off with, with the visioning process between ICSO and ISSC, but then merged roughly a year ago with a parallel initiative by the major funders of global environmental change research under the Belmont Forum. And this conversion has led to an alliance which now works together in a completely new way of co-designing this new initiative. So Future Earth has an alliance including not only science, here represented through the ICSU and ISSC partnership, but also the Belmont Forum of Donors, but also service providers and key agents of change through the United Nations University, UNESCO, UNEP, WMO as an observer, but also the large group of funders of research through IGFA. And the Alliance has appointed a transition team which is now representing, so to say, the scientific community and the broad Alliance in this 18-month transition phase. Now, what's then the criteria for, as we believe, for future Earth research in the future? Well, one clearly is to emphasize more strongly actionable Earth system research, so to combine the, the science, the disciplinary research with 
integrated strategic themes of science that can serve and solve real-world problems in a more rapid way, answer complex questions that require international collaboration, co-design and co-production being something really important and novel throughout the entire research process, which is a transdisciplinary way of working which, which evolves from the disciplinary to interdisciplinary research modes we've known for a long time, and integrating natural social sciences is the big step of taking this opportunity and working from the regional to global scale. The approaches of organizing future Earth research, we believe, is, is the co-design, but also building on current strengths. We, we recognize that 30 years of, of advancements and all the partnerships and projects must be the foundation of future Earth. So at the starting point, we believe that all current research projects under the umbrella of global environmental change programs today should be part or welcome to be part of future Earth. What are then the possible outcomes? Well, clearly, we're working on this, but, but the overall strategic objective is, is to really stand up now and offer to the world the ability to answer the most pressing questions facing humanity on global environmental challenges and world development in the Anthropocene. So clearly about insights and solutions for a transition, but also investments in more forecasting and global observation systems and the integrated science on response that Frank Biermann and, and Lydia were talking about earlier here, but also filling absolute critical knowledge gaps. There are unknowns in so many parts of our interactions with the planet that we now also need to, of course, invest further in. And I'll just go through a couple of initial suggestions, which are just to, to give you a flavor of what we're discussing right now in the broader research framework. So one is clearly, which comes out of research that is ongoing right now, is to combine the, the, the right to development in a world that needs to move out of poverty with pathways to sustainable lifestyles in the world. One area of global environmental change research that then links with development, which has been a poor link so far. Modeling and new integrated modeling approaches that links the economy, demographics, well-being and global change through transitions research and the whole complex of global change and a transition to low-carbon societies, which can, for example, answer the following question of how can science support a rights-based global transition to a low-carbon world economy? And here, of course, we have tremendous progress in the World Climate Research Program and the Global Carbon Project work and the transitions to a fossil fuel-free world and the science behind the need for that to stay under two degrees, combined with the momentous work of the global energy assessment and growing energy needs in the world, the Earth system governance projects on the difficulties in governing the carbon cycle, geoengineering research and innovations and technologies, and the opportunity through future to combine these, to, to link them together in a more strategic joint endeavor. Other efforts which were mentioned earlier here today as well is of course that the oceans is one area that we believe should be central as one theme in future Earth, and clearly the link between biodiversity, ecosystem services, and global change for world development as a very important foundation the whole demographics and well-being and, and crisis issues around migration. And here again comes two very central questions that have been rising up throughout this week. How can we feed a world of 9 billion people while meeting global sustainability targets? And, and how to manage biodiversity and resilience in the Anthropocene? And again, research from the global environmental change community provides elements of this. The tremendous water challenge of 3 billion people now suffering from absolute water scarcity, the growing modeling of Detailed modeling today, as Sybil pointed out, on rainfall impacts at the regional scale from anthropogenic global change that undermines water availability. The risk of tipping points shown by Martin Schaeffer and others in large biomes such as the Sahel. The loss of biodiversity in ecosystems and the opportunity of sustainable intensification agriculture. Linking these together could potentially provide an avenue of science-based solutions in this turbulent phase of development. We're also discussing the whole area of how do we link economic growth with global environmental change here in the National Geographic graph showing the great acceleration in terms of boxes, the, the small boxes there is up until 1950 in terms of affluence, population and technology. And the big box shows our, our ecological space today. How do we link these drivers of social change with global environmental change and development? And finally, we believe that we need an integration capacity. We need to be able to combine all of these elements into synthesis that really provides fundamental knowledge for decision making. And then the most important one, the dot, dot, dot. What are, what's missing here? What are the integrated social ecological themes on global environmental change research for global sustainability that you think should be here, which are not presented so far? And we will be sharing this 
during the course of the work. So where are we then in total? Well, we're in a transition phase right now. We have an 18-month mandate given by the Alliance. We're supposed to launch Future Earth in Rio, and it's expected to be handed over to a new governing council from 1st of January 2013. It's seen as a 10-year initiative, but if it's successful, of course, it will be continued beyond that, and we foresee a new governance structure starting from 2013. Now, the institutional design which we're working on now is, of course, the idea of being flexible and, and fit for purpose. The exciting thing here is to have one common research framework, one overarching governing council, including stakeholders beyond science, one strong science committee, probably drawn from the scientific committees we have today in the global environmental change programs. We believe it should be a distributed institutional design with nodes across the world engaging the global north and south and having a global network initiative that combines efforts of excellence across the world in, in nodes of leadership that also can truly carry out integrated international research. One very important component here is, of course, that Future Earth builds on what we have today. This conference is a manifestation of the growing collaboration and integration of the current global environmental change programs. And it's something really important for the momentum here that three of the programs, the International Human Dimension Program, Diversitas and Biodiversity, and the International Geobiosphere Program, are willing to merge with Future Earth as it goes along and, and develops and succeeds in its launch. The Earth System Science Partnership of the Global Environmental Change Programs will transition into Future Earth already by the end of this year. And the joint program projects of ESSP will be transferred into Future Earth in dialogue with the directors and the programs of the current Global Environmental Change Research. The World Climate Research Program is very supportive and engaged in Future Earth. And the current projects under all these programs, we would like to see part of Future Earth. And I'm coming to a close here. Yeah. Um, We've got so many questions already lined up for you. I'm, I'm just at a very last, last I, I, slide. I give you this much time yeah? to, say, okay. to, to give me your last slide. Excellent. Because I want the audience to interact Absolutely. with you. So what, what happens here is that this is to close then the, the, the social contract between science and society, a new way of doing research and also in communicating and bridging, and the flexibility of doing so. Of course, engaging with the major assessments and also delivering to Rio. And then the final slide here is, of course, this is an opportunity for us, being the first generation to recognize that we can change entire operation of the Earth system, and therefore also we are the first generation to take responsibility, to act on the findings we have. And Future Earth is, is an offer to society to do that in a partnership-based way. Now I'm finished. Thank you. That was a great exposition of Future Earth. We've got loads of questions that have come in. I'm going to ask you to join a panel discussion that we're going to have in a minute or two. Uh, and I'll give you a little clue on one of the questions while you're going down. I'm going to introduce the next speaker, meanwhile. Do natural scientists really want to work with social scientists? Think of your answer to that, Johan. 